Hi everyone, it's Eliana, and I recently received a box of goodies from Lawn Fawn, and so I thought I'd share a card that I made with you. I'm using a couple of their new supplies. I'm using the Jump for Joy stamp set and their fall uh, petite paper pack. Uh, and this video is a bit bright. I had to zoom in because I was using the Mini Misty, and uh, for some reason the video is a little uh, bright. First, I'm starting off with a small piece of cardstock, and I've put my stamp onto the Mini Misty. I'm going to be creating a mask, and so I'm just taking some masking paper from Inka Dinka Do, and I'm just using my uh, Memento ink. And the reason why I'm using that is because uh, I want the ink to be dry when I handle the uh, fussy cutting. Once I get it all cut out, I'm ready to go. And so I've placed my piece of cardstock into the Misty and I'm using my VersaFine black ink. And you need to be careful when you use this because the ink does stay wet for a little bit and you don't want to put your fingers in it. So do your best to not uh, contaminate your fingers and smear ink all over your project. I am cleaning the stamp set and then I'm moving it instead of moving my paper. I wanted to make sure that since I was masking that I um, didn't move my paper from the corner. You'll also notice that I didn't trim all the way around my masking paper. I left a little bit of an edge so that I had a place to grip my masking paper when I moved it. And once this is all done, um, I'm going to have a strip of um, leaves going all the way across. That way I could create a border. I am using the VersaFine ink because I want the dark black um, on my project. I just think it adds a little bit of pop of color and it makes it a little more cartoonish. And um, I, since I'm going to be using Copic coloring, I'm just going to use clear embossing powder and that way it's totally safe for my markers. You could use um, any kind of ink and as long as the um, embossing powder is clear it's not going to harm your markers. If you use uh, embossing powder that it's colored um, you, you have the potential of messing up the tips of your Copic markers. And if you don't have Copic markers you can use uh, pencils. Uh, you can also watercolor if you like since you do have the um, embossing it it kind of raises the, um, creates a little well for the paint to go in. And so I'm just using my clear embossing powder and I'm going to heat emboss everything at once. So I'm going to create my other images too. And I'm just gonna take a couple of the stray leaves that are in the stamp set. And I'm just, uh, that way I have a, a few accent pieces to embellish with. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm just tucking my paper into the corner and then I am just gonna rotate the paper so that I can get another impression. I'm only gonna color three of these. I'm just gonna dip my images into the embossing powder. And now I'm also going to um, do the little hedgehog, I think it's a hedgehog, um, at a later time. But I'm just going to melt the embossing powder with my heat gun. And you do want to heat up your heat gun just a little bit, just so that it minimizes the warping. It'll make it a little bit easier when you color. So for the hedgehog, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my die first. I'm going to stamp my little hedgehog in the middle of my Misty. And my plan is to just take the negative piece of the die cut that I just did, and I'm just gonna center that over the image that's on there. You want to make sure that your grid paper is tucked right into the corner so that you can have a perfectly centered um, image. With these bigger images, for some reason, I kind of struggle to stamp first and then put my die on there. So I like to um, just 
do my die cuts and then that way if you're making multiples you can just stamp your multiples all at once and not have to worry about whether you're going to center your uh, die correctly on each stamped image you can just have them all ready to go and stamp them all at once I hope that really makes sense I was going to fussy cut these before I colored them because the last thing I wanted to do was to um, color them and then mess up with my fussy cutting but I um, decided to go a different route so here are all the colors that I use to color my images and I just lined them all up at the top so that you can just see all the colors at once and I'm not going to show all of the coloring and you'll see why because I've already gotten a piece um, a previously one a previous one that I've colored and I've I already fussy cut it all out so you're just going to see the magic of YouTube at work here um, I'm just going to be coloring the little hedgehog and if you'll notice that the eye smeared a little bit so I'm guessing that embossing powder did not cover the eye entirely so I'm just going to try to smooth it out and blend it out with the colors and I do apologize for the image being washed out or the video being washed out um, my lights were a little bit too bright and it just appeared that way uh, because I zoomed in so I'm just going to be doing some Copic coloring nothing fancy um, the colors that I had one was a little bit too dark and one was too light and so I'm just doing tip to tip coloring to create an in-between color and then I'll just blend it all out again I'm just testing out my color and it is a little dark so what I'll do is I'll go back with that lighter shade and I'm just going to um, color it in and then what I'll do is I'll use that E37 and I will um, flick the color in um, just so that it looks like you see texture in the hedgehog's hair no, I would be using E18 which is copper and so I'm just flicking towards uh, starting at the margin and then just flicking out and it's a small area so my flicks are a little hard to do um, but it really doesn't matter it's just a small tiny image and it it's for fun and it's not it doesn't have to be all fancy and art it could it's just a fun card to give to somebody and I'll now I'm coloring in the leaves and I am I can do the die cutting with the smaller dies so what you'll do is you'll color it and then you'll just center um, the die and just run it through your die cutter and now everything's done I have my two pieces of pattern paper and I'm just going to glue them together just simply because I don't want to be wasteful and I don't want to have to worry about um, putting two pieces together and uh, after I die cut them so I'm just going to adhere them now and I'm just planning out my card so that I make sure that I get enough of the ground which is the brown pattern paper and enough of the sky and I'm just going to use a little bit of low tack tape um, this is post-it tape to uh, secure down my die and I am using a Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die for this and once it's done I am going to adhere it to uh, another piece of cardstock it's cut to the same size uh, I'm doing this because the pattern paper is not as thick as the cardstock and this is an interactive card and so I want to make sure that it's sturdy so I'm just adhering it down. I'm using the corner of my MISTI to line things up so that they perfectly line up. And now I am positioning my die that cuts out the groove for my penny slider. And I want to make sure that the little hedgehog will finish and end in the right spot. So that way I know that uh, he's not going to start up too far into the corner and that he'll end just right into the leaves. Now I've die cut it again 
I have my card base here and I'm just scoring it so that it's nice and flat. And what I plan to do is I'm going to use my Misty so that I could line up that piece that was die cut out. I don't want the back of the slider element to be white and so I'm taking that little cut out and I'm just lining it up. So I know that if I tuck in my card front to my card base into this to the edge of the Misty that I can glue down that little piece and when I assemble my card together it looks like one seamless piece. So now that everything's put together I'm going to put my sentiment on there and um, I'm just going to put it in the upper corner. I'm going to use my transparency uh, and the transparency is available for free on the website. And I'm just going to use my Versafine again to uh, emboss it. I, I like the I like to emboss a lot. I like the way that the embossing looks on the front of the card. It just makes it look more professional. <laughs> and I'm just going to melt it again. I to create my penny slider, I don't have any round um, dimensional adhesive, so I'm making my own. I have a sheet of the Stampin' Dimensionals, and I'm just using a hole punch to cut it out. I don't use the 3M one because um, it's not as thick, and so this one will give me quite a bit of um, dimension, and that way I can make sure that the little hedgehog has plenty of space to move and so I'm just stacking them up and you want to make sure that they're as stacked as uniformly as possible because if, if it's off by a little bit it'll get stuck in the runner of the card and so I'm just removing the adhesive and I'm just tucking it in and I'm making sure that it's going to slide in there well and I'm just adding my little hedgehog and now that he's in place uh, I'm just testing it out to see if it's going to run smoothly. Now I'm going to add my foam adhesive onto the back. I'm going to do two layers of this so that the penny has plenty of room to run into the back. And I'm only going to remove the adhesive from the middle. So in case that I don't get my placement perfect, then um, I have a little bit of wiggle room to take the card apart. And so now that I have it kind of assembled, I can go ahead and, re and test it out, make sure that it's going to work okay. And then I could remove the rest of the backing from the 3M adhesive. Now that everything is secure, I can go ahead and start assembling my card. And I'm going to add some more dimensional adhesive to my leaves. And I kind of have my little stray leaves there and I felt like there just needed to be more of a sentiment up at the top. I thought I put it a little bit too high. And so I'm going to go ahead and add the it's your birthday part of the sentiment that comes in the same stamp set. So I'm going to go ahead and place it into the Misty. I got it all lined up and I do have, uh, I took out the foam insert because the card is dimensional and it is um, thick, I needed to take out the foam insert to stamp the rest of my sentiment on there. And I'm just going to add my leaves with some liquid adhesive and then the smaller leaf that's going to go up at the top is going to get some foam. And just to make sure that my little hedgehog can move freely, I am just, um, oh, I'll get back to that. I'm just going to add some Winkasella randomly to certain parts of the leaves. Not every leaf is getting some Winkasella, just um, some random ones just to add a little bit of glimmer to it. So now back to the hedgehog. To make sure that he's going to slide back and forth uh, well, I'm going to take some cornstarch and a little bit of, and a 
paintbrush and I'm just going to make sure that none of the adhesive is is on the edge of the foam dots I should have done that earlier but um, sometimes if you just add it to it it just helps it move better thanks so much for sticking with me with this long video be sure you give it a thumbs up and you hit the subscribe button we'll see you later have a great day